During that, okay, so during the first week post-procedure, I slept a lot. I kept the blinds closed a lot. It was mostly light sensitivity and discomfort, but there were um, plenty of drops to put in that numbed it. There was oral medication to take. So the pain, while it was uncomfortable, it was manageable. So um, just, if you're planning on having the procedure, I would not plan a busy week, the week post-procedure, because you're not gonna feel great. Uh, maybe you will, I didn't. I was glad to be able to sleep and rest that week. So then, after the, particularly after the first three days and after the first week, the pain was negligible. You just didn't notice it. The light sensitivity continued most of the summer. And I, like I said, May is my reference point of when I had the procedure. By August, just so you can know my schedule, I was able to go and enjoy a beach vacation in the Florida sun. So by August, the light sensitivity was gone. And I was light sensitive before, so that was nice. As far as the vision, um, of course, it was completely blurry the first week after the procedure. And then when I got home, I would say about two weeks post-procedure, the vision got a lot worse, which um, kind of caught me by surprise. And so the left eye clouded over a lot. And I can remember one morning trying to cook breakfast, and I thought, I can't see my hands. And for some reason, I couldn't see out of the right eye either. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> But um, over the summer, for about eight weeks, it got worse, so you might also want to plan for that, too. I don't know if everybody follows that pattern, but mine definitely, that left eye got worse. By mid-July, that fogginess cleared, and it got back to normal, like probably where I started. So that was probably about eight weeks into the procedure. So... Um, from that point on, the eye cleared up, got back to normal. I was not light sensitive. The pain level was good, it was great. And then I had my three month checkup and my six month checkup. And so um, I would use those as benchmarks because that's what I understood would be some of the most promising times to see an improvement of, in vision. And I realized from the beginning that the only reason you do cross legging is to stabilize your eye. But I'm sure if you're watching this video, <laughs> that's not all you want out of it. But uh, for me, my vision did not improve. It was uh, stable. But at month three and month six, you know, my topography to me looked a lot the same. And my eye stayed pretty much the same. And that was a little disappointing for me, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. So... Um, from that point on, that was November was six months, but I was able, I, you know, we had a good year. I was able to get a lot of things done that didn't relate to keratoconus. So I think um, the fact that the keratoconus wasn't in the front of my choices in life just shows that um, it was a pretty productive year. But um, by February, I woke up one morning in February and I thought, you know, Dr. Rabinowitz said at the end of the year, if your eye is stable, you can have PRK, and we can knock off the rest of the astigmatism. And so I got really excited again because I thought, well, now it's time to go get the prize. I'll uh, schedule PRK, and I'll get rid of the astigmatism, and I'll have my vision hopefully improved. Interestingly enough, I've done intacts and cross-linking, and neither of those procedures, when I look at the what I signed on for, neither of those was to improve my vision. It was to stabilize my cornea. But the PRK is the only procedure I've had so far that is just for vision. So I was pretty excited to get that done, and we'll see how that goes. But um, so, so far, I've talked about, well, I mean, I guess if you're looking at having cross-linking done, you know that there's a financial investment you have to make. You know there's a physical investment you have to make because you're going to have your, a procedure done on your eye. But there's also an emotional cost to all of this. And um, if you're watching this video, you're not watching it. There's a good chance you're not watching it because you're doing well. Probably you're watching it because your eye hurts all the time. Your contacts aren't getting you far enough. And then to put the contacts in, it hurts like crazy. I've been there. I know what blinding pain feels like. So I'm just guessing if you're watching this video for yourself or somebody you care about, uh, you're exhausted. You're emotionally spent and you're exhausted with the disease because it is an exhausting condition. And so I think you should just realize that if you do participate in cross-linking, there's an emotional investment in it. And I'll just tell you about mine. 
to get the nerve up to come and take the risk because you're, you're taking a risk to come and have this procedure done. It's an emotional risk, I guess I'd say. Um, when I got here for the procedure, it was an adrenaline rush. I had all my friends and my family praying for me. I was really excited. And so having the procedure done, that was the easy part. The week post-procedure, even though it was uncomfortable, I was still on that adrenaline high. And so that was emotionally fine. But um, the first, I guess the first little hurdle or heartbreak, I might say, and this is probably if Dr. Rabinowitz looks at this, he'd say my expectations were wrong, but I, you know, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Uh, one week post-procedure, I had my topography done. The first topography, I think it was the first topography done after the cross-linking. And it's, it came out of the computer and it looked just the same. And I, I don't know what I was expecting, and I know it was too early to see a change, but I was like, oh man, are you kidding me? It looks just the same. And so I was, I was disappointed. And Henry said, well, it's not supposed to be better. It's month three or month six where you're going to, if you're going to have a visual improvement. I'm like, yes, I know it's not to improve my vision. It's to stabilize my eye. But I'm lying if I said that I didn't want my vision to improve. I'd be lying if I said I didn't think it would improve. That's what I thought was going to happen. And so um, I told you that through July, my vision in this left eye got a lot worse. And that was hard because you come home, you're tired from the trip, you've had that whole adrenaline rush, so you're, you're let down. And then to be worse off than when you started, it's tough. I was depressed last summer. It was hard. I couldn't drive the car. I couldn't get the kids around. It was summer. They're staring at me. We're bored. And so I was, I was pretty down in the dumps last summer. But as the, um, the light sensitivity went away, I got more comfortable, the fog cleared, and I was able to resume my normal activities, my spirits did lift. Now by month three and month six, when I didn't have any visual improvement, I was down in the dumps again. I was like, really? Other people, there are other people that are having visual improvement. Why am I not? And so that's, it's an emotional roller coaster. And I'm so happy for the people that do have some visual improvement from the procedure. I, I just wasn't one of them. But then when I woke up that morning in February and thought about the PRK, I thought, well, you know, it's stable now, and that's fantastic. I did not think stability was a, a good enough outcome, if I'm honest with you, but by the time I got through the year, we had a good year. We were able to do things without the keratoconus being so upfront. I thought a stable eye is a fantastic eye, and I became very happy with my stable eye, and I got really excited about planning for the PRK. I'm back again. <laughs> so I just, I would, I would not want anybody to not think about the emotional impact before you do this, because I know people that are suffering with keratoconus, you're tired anyway. It's, it's just, it's tiring and it's exhausting, and so there is that emotional impact that the procedure has and um, you know I want to say keratoconus I've had a I've had an easy life but keratoconus is probably the biggest challenge I've had to face but it's also been most one of the most productive ones and so I would just hope and challenge you that if you are going through it that you would just dig really deep and figure out who you are and let it build your character and refine you and just make you into a stronger person because um, I think it has the potential to do that